First, is it wrong to say claiming benefits may be a lifestyle choice for some Brits? 0207862222. This is going to be the election campaign. Rishi Sunak has said he's on a moral mission to tackle so-called sick note culture and get people with conditions like anxiety and depression back to work. He vowed benefits would remain a safety net for those who genuinely need them. But he argued the growing trend of people being signed off when they may be medically fit to work was unstable. And he said creating a deep sense of unfairness. And this is perhaps one of his most controversial plans to get people working again. Anyone who doesn't comply with the conditions set by their work coach, such as accepting an available job, will, after 12 months, have their claim closed and their benefits removed entirely. Because unemployment support should be a safety net, never a lifestyle choice. Charities have accused the Prime Minister of a full-on assault on sick people, but do you think he's got a point when he says some people choose a life on benefits? Ali? Uh, yes, I do think he's got a point. I, but I do think that if you if you have a coach and, and you, you're, we need to look at what people can do, not what they can't do, if your coach has persistently tried to get you a placement and you consistently refuse, that is a problem. But the other side of this equation is that a lot of people are suffering from mental health issues, anxiety and depression, and there's insufficient support therapies available to actually help them get back on their feet. And what happens is that GPs too often reach for medicalization, giving them pills, which are meant to last for weeks, but end up lasting for years because there's not enough support. So yes, I support the prime minister in this, but the other flip side of it, if you want to do this prime minister, you then also need to invest heavily in providing mental health support as well to get people back on their feet. Well, he, uh, I mean, it, 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 he said that he's not going to let doctors sign people off long term, which is potentially the biggest policy of the lot. What do you think, Marina? I, I think... <sighs> I think it tells us a lot about society, how they treat the sick and vulnerable and like, disabled. And what we're seeing is just performative cruelty now. Because how much is this actually going to raise? How much is going to save, you know? Yeah, they're going to go after these people. And protect, like, there are going to be people who've got anxiety, who can't work, who are going to be right now, have the fear of God struck into them because they're thinking, my benefits might be taken away. Like, a lifestyle choice, homelessness, a lifestyle choice. Living on, what is it, £100 a week? A lifestyle but choice. But anxiety is an interesting one because it, it's, <laughs> it, you, I suppose you could argue that someone can work with it and if they work from home, if they're in a call centre or something, it might even help them. Absolutely fine, but the reason that we know that he doesn't really care about this is because in the same week, and I think this has gone under the radar a little bit, he has scrapped, there's a funding scheme to try and get disabled people back to work. He scrapped it. If he really cared about being getting people back to work, he would invest in the things that would help them get back into work. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a coincidence that we've got a cost of living crisis, that we've got record waiting lists, that all of our support services have collapsed. If you try, there's some really, some really heartbreaking threads on social where people actually document their journeys of trying to get support for health or for mental care issues, and there is this just closed door after closed that door. That I agree after with. Door. That, that I agree. How are they supposed to get back into? That the I workplace? agree with. The problem, I, I agree with you on that particular point that there should be more support but I also think that there's a bigger issue here which is the almost the socialization of mental health into our society and this happens in schools with kids we're seeing a huge increase in anxiety and depression amongst kids amongst young people and and to the point 69 billion is now spent on benefits this is going to increase by 50 percent in the next four years this is a seriously big issue we need to try and get people back to what we need to support and that's why i say the prime minister's right to make this point but he also then needs to invest in mental health support to make it happen yes, have you got any guess as to why this incredible stat we've seen says that one in four people of working age aren't working is that, does that, is that because they're Doesn't pensioners that or what? students as it, it well? It does, it does. So I think that's does. a really mis misleading So that's not stat. helpful? No, I don't think that's helpful mm. at all. But, it's, it's no, the but there are one million people of working age who are not, who are not working. Yeah, but, which is a right. different thing, yeah. But yeah. I, 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 okay, so let's, let's look because at that, right? Let's, see, let, let's take that out of it, right? There was a quote I read uh, and I thought it was so strong. A guy called Paul Bassett Davies wrote this and wrote, and wrote, why, why are an increasing number of Britain's workers unable or unwilling to endure lives of meaningless toil to prop up an uncaring, parasitic system that bleeds them dry for the benefits of greedy billionaires. And I guess that's part of it. Again, it's a we bit loaded, isn't it, it frankly? But do you I mean, know what we've taken away? Like, so, for example, for if we're going to force work. these people back into work, right, mm. we know they're going to be doing minimum wage jobs where 
they're not going to be able to afford to live. They're probably going to still be on universal, um, what is but it? But how does uh, it help them keeping on benefits? Though? I'm not saying it does, but we've broken the social contract with people. The incentive isn't there. They don't get paid enough. Cost of living crisis is crippling. And what is the motivation for doing so? But you see, that's a really interesting point. If the motivation is that there's no point, and, and I hear you completely, and I've heard this, that there's no motivation for working the whole week to get 100 quid more than I'd get on benefits. The, the system is some way broken. So we either need to pay people a lot more, increase I think, minimum I think wage, something. that might be part of the answer, but it can't pay to, to be in a situation where people feel that it's not, they're not incentivized to work and to get themselves to a place where with support they can get better. John Marina, right. quickly, and I'll get to Just want to say, but going back to the people who truly, are, you know, who are sick and disabled, I think, you know, if you speak like Dr. Amir Khan, he's a doctor. He says the vast majority of people he sees would give anything to be able to be fit enough to work. And yet now to have a government saying, oh, you're, we're going to bring in some outside providers, which they did 20 years ago and it proved very problematic and people died as what, a result. What, I see what these private firms these that say... private firms. Mm, he's, the yeah. government say, it, the but, government's okay. saying that your GP is not qualified to tell if you're sick or not. Mariana in Dorset, what do you think? Well, um, I, I think that they're abusing the system. I'm, I'm a mother. I work. And unfortunately, there's a lot of people that is genuinely sick but there's a lot of people that they know how to trick the system and they abuse it systematically. And as a mother of two that over, um, let's say, Christmas or any kind of festivities or holidays, I have to put my kids in a club and I have to put half of my salary or more to pay that. And I see people on benefits that they get that for free. Mm. It's quite disturbing. On top of that, um, I suffer from a postnatal depression quite for a long time, and it's, it's not very nice. Um, I'm going to say that the moment you get out of your house, the moment you start like doing a job, even if it's part-time or whatever, it actually helps your mental health. Yeah. You, feel, you feel actually that you have a purpose. And if you are in a circle that you're being sick all the time and you, you sign up sick and you stay in your house, it's an end in circle. So you have to also look at the bright side. Unfortunately, the, the system is collapsed. There's not enough health. It's not about pills. It's about okay, mental yeah. health. Marina, out of the hang on, Mariana, hang on. Like, feel for your position. I understand what you're saying. But do you not think it's interesting that you are looking down? So you're looking at the people who have got even probably less than you, who are less motivated than you, whatever, rather than looking up you, you and questioning know, and questioning background. why don't you have... I, I'm not suggesting you I don't know, know your background. If I have very little, I have to come from nothing. And I'm telling you, I'm a foreigner. And I have to sign a paper and yes, get and, any and I'm benefit. saying and given, I have to get out. And I'm saying and that the fact that you are working and you're having to pay as much as you are, you should be getting more. So you should be questioning the system. Like, why am I not being paid more? Why is all my money going on all these clubs? Rather than looking down, do you see I'm saying look up rather yeah, than looking down? Well, Mariana, thank you so much. David in Berkshire, hi. Hello. Is Sun is Sunak right, right to say, David, basically the Sunak announcement is after 12 months, Unless you've got, I mean, you're sort of in an oxygen tank and you can only move one eyelid, you're going to lose your benefits. Are you talking to me, Jeremy? Uh, David, I just thought I would because you called. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Jeremy, I, I'm just calling because I've come away from the telly, so I've only just listened in at the last sort of 10 minutes. Um, Listen, I'm having to claim benefits for the first time in my life. First time I've ever had to claim benefits. It's the most soul-destroying thing you can do in your life. I had three heart attacks um, all at the same time, unfortunately. The job I used to do, I was an exhibition carpenter. I'm still very fit, very healthy, mm. but trying to get a job at the moment at my age and obviously everything that's happened, nobody wants to employ me. I hear you. Well, um, it's a classic example. But it, I, I, so, so are you worried that they're going to take it away from you? Or are you I thinking... haven't. Even, I'm, cl I'm claiming today. I've tried for a year. I haven't had a job for a year. I've used all my savings rather than, the, than going on the dole. Um, there's so many people out there that it's just made out as though everybody's just trying to take money. <laughs> There's loads of us that aren't. We just want a job. Understood, David. But, well, listen, I wish you all the best with it. It's, uh, I really hope your health gets better as well, because that will be the key to getting back, back on the road. Thanks, David, so much. Thank you. Our last okay. caller, Dave, would definitely disagree. But Joe in Sheffield, what do you think? Hello. Good morning, all. Morning. Be very quick, because I'm, I'm a bit upset. Um, 
I just one thing. You cannot go to your doctors, you can't go to the DGP and get a statement or a letter saying that you have depression or anxiety, etc., and then include that to receive benefits if you apply for ESA or PIP. It says in black and white, we do not accept statements from your GP. Mm. You can't do it. Richie Sunak doesn't seem to even know the policies of his own DWP. But you you can get can't signed off use work. a statement. You can get signed off work long term with the doctors. That would have to be with an employer. That's yeah. not through. through. You can't. You can't get signed off work long term What's through the DWP and those benefits. What's your situation? Um, I was an English teacher for 15 years. Um, I've been on, on uh, a caller many, many times on this programme. Oh, yeah, we talked to you and you had, you had burnout, Joe, yeah. remember? Yeah, no, it was a lot more than that. It wasn't really um, teaching. Uh, it wasn't really related to teaching. I became very poorly at home. My friends said they saw it coming in hindsight. But I got diagnosed with borderline personality disorder after... I don't even remember about three days, but a complete and total breakdown, mm. uh, which was pretty monstrous. And I'm still go going through, I'm not able to get any access uh, for any mental health support because, um, and I am just going to say this, Sheffield Health and Social Care are appalling and make up ridiculous excuses as to why I'm not eligible. Um, uh, intrinsically, of course, the, the problem is monies from the government. Of course it is. How those yeah. monies are managed but, is a different matter. Understood, but that so is separate. Uh, Joe, let's stay focused here, because what we're talking about is whether it's acceptable for Rishi Sunak to say after a year, if they think that you can do a job, not your old job, but any job, then you will lose your benefits. I think so long as the government can actually provide serious evidence that you have been in receipt of mental health support, etc., that, that you have undergone that for a year and will continue to receive it to be, support you whilst going into work, why on earth would I have a problem with that? As if I'd want to be spending my Monday, Monday morning nearly in tears to you on, the, on your panel and the general public on the phone. Understood. If I could go back to work, why would they, I, I would accept? Yeah, all right. I think Mar I Marina, Marina. Joe, I completely, honestly, I feel for you so much. And I, honestly, just hearing you, there are so many people that are going to be in Joe's position. Do you know what scares me as well is that. The Department for Work and Pensions has declared people fit in the past. Do you remember Stephen Smith? 64, emaciated. It was a very famous picture. Okay. Emaciated no. man, had pneumonia. He was deemed fit to work by the DWP. He was forced to leave hospital to fight that decision, and he died. Mm. Um, and I just think now putting that out of the hands of the DWP, who have screwed up on several occasions, into the hands of a private company, who what are they going to be targeted on? Finding people fit to work? Well, that, well, they, they that, will... that, to me, says people are going to die. Good pe people in... And thank you, Joe, for your call. Um, bless you, and I hope to speak again. People in Joe's situation are very vulnerable, aren't they? Because she will have some good days. And if she has an appointment on a good day, physically she won't be appearing to have any disability. The disability is mental. And maybe on a Tuesday morning... When she has her appointment, mm. she hasn't got it. Mm. Well, I think and that's it can be really tough. I think Joe made the point that uh, clearly you need to have the support, which is the point I was making right at the start. Yeah. If the prime minister wants to clamp down, that's perfectly fine. But you do need to provide okay. the mental health support because I've spoken to many GPs about this, and they say, "Look, we, we, what, what do you want us to do? We can only reach for medicalisation because we've got no other levers mm. to pull. There are no talking therapies. There's very minimal, minimal cognitive behavioural therapy available, which is also not a one size fits all for everyone with every single type of anxiety. But we depression. have so much mental illness in this country. You could literally train half the the unemployed. Well, you could train half the working age." population as councillors yeah. and it wouldn't meet the need. They're just one half council, the other half. And it's, it's, it's really, I don't know how we've got to this point, but I'm not sure anyone's going to sort this. The resources aren't there. Sheffield Trust, who were mentioned by Joe, uh, aren't available for comment, by the way, just in case they wanted to, to, to put their side. Paul is in West Yorkshire. Hi. Good morning, Jeremy. Is it okay to say after one year, no benefits? No, because... He's going to create a, home, more, a homeless problem. We've already got a massive homeless problem as it is. So, well, he wants. To, I, I'm, lot, he's not here to, to reply to that, but I'm assuming he would say he wants people to decide 
to work to pay their rent instead of getting it on benefits. Don't shoot me, I'm just repeating it. No, no, because at the end of the day, right, I'm on benefits myself. I'm long-term sick with PTSD, anxiety, depression, and mobility issues. So okay. what, he, what he's trying to say is that with all these new benefit things, he's going to force me back into work. I, th- I think he is saying that. I think he is very much so saying that's that. A, that's a breach of international law under the Disability Act. Paul, can well, I ask you something? Change the law then. It's Paul, going to Paul, cost Paul. employers more under, sec- under the Disability Equalities Act mm. to make reasonable adjustments. Paul, can I ask you a question? Is there, is there, and given your situation, given your condition, which is very serious, um, is there any kind of work that you could foresee you being capable of doing? No. I've done security, I've done catering, I've done, I've done gardening, I've done furniture restoration, I've done call centre work, I've done retail, there is, I've done warehouse work, I've been a forklift driver, there is no work available for me because of my anxiety and depression. So, so you, couldn't because, do, you couldn't work from home, for example, in... No. No. No, because I've done call centre, I've done the call centre okay. stuff. Okay, doesn't work. And, and I could not, I would not be able to handle it. Is it just out of interest, Paul? Were you were you in the military? Um, yes. I just wondered if that but was the back. Also, my PTSD. I was diagnosed with PTSD before I was in the military. Okay. Paul, Paul, is it a case? Is it a case of um, that the, your condition is is so severe that you're incapable, or is it that, that you're not getting enough support uh, from uh, I, medical services to help you? I'm not getting one. I'm not getting the support. Right. Right. I've I've got. I'm on a waiting list for the next seven years. Right, and talking therapies on the NHS is only for twelve weeks. You see, this is if the problem. If I want long term, term yeah. I'd have to be sectioned in an NHS mental yeah. mental health hospital to get long term, or go private. No, so that's the issue. Simple. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, mental health is a very, very it's, it's a long growing. Term it's it's issue growing as well. It's growing, and it's yeah. kind of intractable for lots of people. Yeah. So thoughts with you if you're dealing with that. Thanks for.